If you didn't know it, Fusion has some pretty nice tools for being able to reuse some of your work and make some minor changes to it. So I wanted to go over in this video the differences between copy, duplicate, and derive, which are three uh, options you can find inside of Fusion. So the first one I want to talk about is the difference between duplicate and copy. If I were to go to an operation and right click on it, I could choose to do duplicate or control D on a Mac or command, I'm sorry, command D on a Mac or control D on Windows. And when I do that, that operation is going to be placed directly underneath the operation that it was duplicated from and it's going to be an exact copy. If I were to right click on this operation and choose the copy option instead, I can now go to my setup, whatever setup I'm working on, right click and choose to paste and it's gonna paste that operation at the very end of the list. So really copy and duplicate are the same. The only real difference is where does the operation get placed in order in your browser? So let me delete these two extra faces off of here since we don't need them. The other thing I wanted to talk about is the derive operation. So if we were to look at this uh, 2D adaptive, we know that all I've done is roughed it, but eventually I'm gonna to have to come back with another tool to go around the outside and finish that part. So in order, instead of creating a new 2D contour and going through all the work, I've already got some of my selections made like the tool and the geometry that I want to machine. I can try to reuse some of that by right clicking on it and choosing the create derived operation in 2D milling. Now you'll note that only 2D milling options are available here. You can't go to a 3D operation. And if you started out with a 3D operation, you couldn't change it to a 2D operation. So I'm going to say 2D milling, and then I'm going to select 2D contour. And when I do the tool that I was use, uh, was using comes up. On the geometry, it's already pre-selected. My heights have a, some, uh, it's the same copy. I'm going to say minus 0 0.01 instead of 20 thousands pass on this one. On the passes tab, um, I could make some changes here if I wanted to, and I could change things on the linking tab if I need to. But really, now when I hit OK, I've taken that 2D adaptive operation and I've changed it into a 2D contour. Now I can drag this back up in the list so I can go to my 2D adaptive and then my 2D contour. I have another 2D adaptive here where I've left some material on the walls and on the floors and what I might want to do now is change this into a different style of operation. So I could right click, create derived operation, 2D milling, and let's do a 2D pocket on this one. <clears throat> so my Tool is going to come up. My geometry is going to be pre-selected. I can go to my heights and maybe I want to make a small change here. I don't want this helixing all the way through the material, so I'm going to change, change it from selected contours. Sorry, let me try that again. From selected contours with a positive, what I left on the floor, which is 0 0.01, to the selected contours. On my passes, everything looks pretty good, except for I don't want to leave any stock because this is a finishing operation. And I can add a finishing pass. Uh, of 10 thousandths of an inch. On my linking tab, I'm going to change one more thing. I don't want this to helix in on the ramping clearance, so right now it would start 100 thousandths of an inch above the plane I told it to start from and start a helix in. I'm going to change this to be 0 0.005 just so I get a little partial helix on there. And then I can go ahead and hit OK. And now I'm going to tool path that cleans out the floors. And if I wanted to, I could also come back and adjust things like the stock contour or the pockets that it's uh, the, the, the geometry that I'm actually machining. But there you can see that we changed a 2D adaptive into a 2D pocket, and I can rearrange that and put that up there. So I've got my 2D adaptive and my 2D pocket. I've got another 2D adaptive, and I can do that one more time. Right click, create derived operation, 2D milling, 2D contour. Everything is pre-selected for me. Again, maybe I'll change my heights, minus 0 0.01. On the passes tab, everything looks good. Uh, linking tab, everything looks good. And now I've got an operation that's gone and uh, done a contouring operation on those bottom bores. So hopefully you can see that the create derived operation can save you some time. It just lets you change one strategy to a different strategy. Let's go over to a different part and see another area where I used derived operation a lot, or at least I did when I was first learning the 3D toolpath strategies inside of Fusion. So if we look at my setup here, you can see I've created it from a solid. And if I simulate my toolpath, let's go ahead and uh, start from this 2D contour so we can see what's left. And I will hit play and you can see this last 2D contour just gets rid of the last uh, blue area, the, the contouring. And it's going to leave a bunch of those stair step uh, pieces of material is what I have left for stock. So I have to come back with a ball mill to take care of these operations. 
but you may not be sure. Should you use a parallel? Should you use a more spiral? Should you use a contour? Should you use a scallop? Um, you can see it's going to be a little bit of work to go through these different tool paths to figure out which one you want to do. So I'm going to choose to do a 3D and let's start out by doing a parallel. So I'm going to say 3D and parallel. I'm going to go select a tool and here's a quarter inch ball mill that I can use for this. And in my geometry now, I want to machine a selection. Uh, I could have just selected on the geometry would have already, it would have automatically changed that to selection as well. But I want to click somewhere in my geometry that I want to keep once. I'm going to click on that a second time. Now I want to do a close contour and I'm just going to repath fusion where I want it to go. So you can see I've already got a few clicks on here. Go ahead and hit the plus button. Um, maybe now on my passes, I'm going to have to probably figure out what the angle of this is going to be in relation to the Z axis. So let's just try 45 degrees at first. I don't think that's going to be quite right, but we'll, we'll see. And the step over now, let's say point, uh, zero, 0.01, we'll do 10,000 of an inch. And then my linking, I'm going to do a minimum retraction. So that looks good to me. I'll go ahead and hit OK. And there I get a, uh, a parallel operation that's completely backwards. Let me do a couple things that'll kind of fix this. Um, I want to do my contact point boundary and my minus tolerance. If you don't know what I just changed there, have a look at my other video called contact point boundary. I'll try to put a card up for you so you can link to it. And then passes, I'm going to change this to be uh, negative 25 degrees. Let's try that and see if that makes it better. And I'll hit OK. And there we go. So we can see we get a tool path that's not um, terrible. That negative 25 actually wasn't an awful guess. But I don't know. I don't know if it's my favorite. Uh, maybe I'd like to try a different tool path like scallop. But I really don't want to go through the process of setting all those defaults over again. So here's where I found a really good use of derive is. I can right click on this parallel operation and choose to create a derived operation, 3D milling, and let's try to see what the scallop tool path will do. When I go to my geometry, it's already pre-selected. My additional offset is set, my contact point boundary is on, and on the passes, my step overs are defaulted. On the linking, my minimum retraction is set just like it was before. So I can go ahead and hit OK, and with very little effort, I was able to uh, go and change that toolpath into a scallop toolpath from a parallel toolpath. And now I can compare the two and try to understand the differences between them and figure out which one do I like better. So it's a really good way to explore different toolpath options when it comes to 3D servicing toolpaths as well. So hopefully that helps to explain the difference between copy and duplicate and also how you can use the derive command to save yourself a lot of time as you're programming your parts. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and thanks for watching.